Hello, welcome to Cult Storytime. I'm Angel. I wanted to do a whole playlist about the things that have helped me um, because I have a bunch of playlists about the things that have hindered. So I think that as much fun as it is to hear crazy stories and everything, there is the whole part about um, needing to heal yourself. And there's this really beautiful quote, I don't know who said it, um, where they say, your wound is not your fault, but your healing is your responsibility. And that's something that I really believe um, and both of those, both sides of that sentence is true. So your wound is not your fault. And you, you have to know that and you have to believe that. And also your healing is your responsibility. Both of those things are true at the same time. So I just want to talk about the things that have been the most helpful for me uh, in healing from all of this, because I do have a very abusive past um, and they, they catch you on all fronts. They catch you, um, they abuse you kind of in, in every way possible um, and none of it none of it is my fault and I know that but it also took me a while to know that because it does feel especially as a child you don't know what you did wrong um, but why would an adult be beating you or why would they be hurting you and telling you that you're worthless if it wasn't true so you just you do internalize that I internalize that and I believed it for a really long time um, that I must have deserved this, um, these horrible things that happened to me, because if I was better, I would have been treated better. And that is just categorically false. Um, you never, you never deserve any sort of abuse, um, across the board, whether it's like spiritual, sexual, physical, emotional, mental abuse, just none of it, you never deserve it. But people don't know, people who um, have not healed their own wound, the only thing they know how to do is just to bleed out on others. So it's important for you to learn how to heal yourself, to understand again that your wound is not your fault, but you have to identify what it is. Because um, you can't just bandage yourself all up, right? You have to identify where's the wound, how can I heal this one? And then once that one is healed, then you can move on to the next. Um, so a huge part of my healing, there are two books that I recommend. And if I could only recommend one book, just one it would be this one which is art of living i don't know if you can see there it is art of living by epictetus um and epictetus is a stoic and he was a slave who was born in 55 ce in the eastern outreaches of the roman empire and there are a lot of stoics but the reason that i love him the best is because um he was a slave and he talks a lot about um he talks a lot about oppression and I just, I resonate with that a lot. Um, he was known for um, becoming a Stoic later in life, but he was a slave for a very long time and his master used to keep him chained up with like um, something on his leg and he ended up having a leg wound, et cetera, et cetera. But anyways, so he has these beautiful, um, this edition by Sharon LaBelle has a bunch of beautiful little quotes that are really quick and short. They're just so full of wisdom. And I think that there are certain books that as you grow, you kind of grow out of it. Certain books are really good for certain phases of your life. And then once you understand the concept, you move on. Um, and then the concept isn't valuable later in life. It's valuable for a time in your life, but not throughout it. And this one I've found has been valuable in every moment that I've gone through. I have found something valuable. So Art of Living, Epictetus. If I had one book to read, it would be this one. And then the second book that I recommend, I actually don't have. I scoured the house for it, but what I do is I give it away a lot. Um, I've given away like a couple of copies of this one, but now I know I do, so now I have three in the house. <laughs> I picked the nicest one. But the second book is The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. And a lot of people have probably heard about her. If not, go look it up. She's amazing. Um, but she talks about vulner vulnerability being a gift. And I think coming from an abusive background, you do not, I did not think that vulnerability was a gift because I was like, no, people see vulner uh, vulnerability and then they prey on it, which people do. Um, and that is all that I had evidence for, for over two decades of my life. So coming out of it and then having this stoic philosophy, which just kind of tells you like chin up, keep after it. And that is kind of what I did. I kind of did like the stiff upper lip and just, you know, like rage through whatever my emotions were and just like ignore it, wall it up, put it behind something and keep moving. 
And I think that it, that's useful for a time, but then there comes a time where if you want to um, be involved in the joy of life, you do have to um, go towards softness, which if you have an abuse background, you do not want to go towards softness because um, that is a, like softness is a red flag if you, well, at least it was for me. So um, her book, The Gifts of Imperfection, helped me a lot. It was also the first time that I had ever heard that I was good enough. And her that book, she has a line where she says, you know, you're good enough. And I remember reading it and shutting the book and being like, what is this? Like, this is crap. Like, she has no idea who I am, so she thinks I'm good enough. Like, she doesn't even know. Um, but then I like thought about it and I was like, wow, like I'm 27 years old and no one has ever told me that I'm good enough. Like not one single person in my life has told me that. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe I can start to believe it, you know, and it, it took a while to believe it. Um, but it is true and things that are true are worth believing. So if you have never heard that you're good enough, I highly recommend that you listen and I will tell you that you're good enough. Otherwise, go get her book, Gifts of Imperfection. Um, but those are my recommendations if you are in the middle of something that is um, that you are trying to heal from, if there's a wound that you have yet to identify um, and yet to heal, then I recommend those two books, Art of Living by Epictetus, translated by Sharon LaBelle, and The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. Those two have been incredible for me. Highly recommend them. Like I said, I give them away to people as gifts a lot. And as a final reminder, um, it's important to remember that acknowledging your trauma doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It just means that you are in more pain than you need to be in. Even if you've come from a background that is incredibly um, abusive towards you, that doesn't mean there's anything. Acknowledging a wound doesn't mean that you're broke and it means that now you can start fixing the wound especially if you have never given yourself permission to acknowledge that you are a complete human being and that there is nothing wrong with you. Um, you're made of good stuff, and I think that sometimes we forget that, but we are all made of really good stuff. So acknowledge where your wound is, and that way you can start healing. And again, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just that you are in more pain than you need to be. So start giving yourself permission to move towards the joy, and hopefully this is helpful. Um, ask me questions if you have them. Otherwise, um, thank you for being here, and I'll see you next time.